enjoying life. Happiness is uh, everything that's good for you, it's good for your company around you. Eating, doing what you want to do, and uh, enjoying yourself. And Being content and know that you're living for a purpose. First of all, happiness is to have a quiet life and a simple life and a peaceful life and uh, to, to live without problems, but that's not simple. <laughs> this class is called the 48 Ways. Why? Because in one of the instructions for living, in the Mishnah, in Ethics of Our Fathers, the sixth chapter, the sixth Mishnah of Ethics of Our Fathers, there's a list, 48 tools that a human being has to master if he's going to get the most out of life. Whatever he decides, he wants to get out of his life. You want to be a baseball star? Use the 48 ways, yeah. You want to be a rich man? You want to be a rich man? 48 ways, man, you'll make it. You want to be a, uh, a top-notch lawyer? 48 ways. I mean, these are tools. You want to have pleasure? You need tools. If you decided now, and please decide, you have to have pleasure in life. That's the Almighty created you. Create a world for your pleasure. Enjoy it. If your mother bakes a cake, does she want you to enjoy it? She bakes it especially for you. Do you, you got to enjoy it? The Almighty made a world especially for you. Should you enjoy it? Yeah? Okay, so you decide you can enjoy it. Remember, that's your job in Judaism. But what are you going to do? How do you enjoy it? The Almighty says, here are 48 tools. Make sense? Okay, so this class is the 48 ways to wisdom. We study one of this list every day. We're on number 27 of the 48 ways. Number 27 of the 48 ways reads, Sameach Bechelko. <coughs> Sameach means to take joy. Bechelko is in his portion. Take joy in your portion. <laughs> what does that mean, to take joy in your portion? So you have to define it a little more. What is your portion? What is your portion? What do you have? That's your portion. Your portion in life, whatever you got. So what does it mean to take joy in your portion? That you focus and appreciate and enjoy what you have. Does that make sense? So in Hebrew, that word means, those two words is the equivalent of the English expression to be happy. If you want to live, you've got to learn to be happy. Before I start, I'd like to tell you a story to give you a, at least a clue. You see that there's some problems, but a clue as to what happiness is really about. So one time, I was in my office, and they usher in a young man, one of the tourists, and he walks over to my desk, and this was a Dutch boy from Amsterdam. And he comes over to my desk, and he sits down, and while he was walking over to my desk, I noticed one thing. I noticed this is the happiest kid I've ever met. You ever noticed people who are happy? This was the happiest young man I've ever seen. And I was so impressed that I commented on him. I told him, you know, I've never met a person that was as happy as you. He said, I know. People have mentioned it to me. So what are you going to ask a guy like that? You've got to learn. What are you going to ask him? Can you explain how in the world you have this gift of being happy? He says, yes. I got a gift when I was 11 years old. Got a gift of happiness when you were 11 years old? Yes, he says. From who? Who gave you a gift of happiness when you were 11 years old? He says, God. Oh, boy, I figured a flake. <laughs> 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 this is terrible. But, you know, once you're committed, you go all the way. I say, okay, would you mind explaining how God gave you a gift of happiness when you were 11 years old? He says, sure. He says, at 11 years old, I was riding a bicycle. He was riding a bicycle over one of the dams over there in Amsterdam, near the ocean, open. A wind came, a gust of wind, a sudden gust of wind came, knocked him off his bike. He fell onto the road in the path of a truck loaded with sand. A sand truck went over his leg, cut it off, and sent it scattered 12 feet from him. Lost the leg. When he walked in, I hadn't noticed, you see. He had a false leg, you know, he had an uh, artificial leg, and he was walking. He said he saw his leg 12 feet from him, and he was very depressed. 
Very depressing. <laughs> so he said to himself, this is not going to help you. And then he tells me a story. The people gathered around him, and they were gawking at him with the kid without the leg. This is terrible. You're bleeding. And he said to them, hey, look, he's lying there. He can't get up. He said, look, either you get me help or get the heck out of here. You know? I'm dying. Yeah. So they ran. They got him an ambulance. They took him to the hospital. The whole story. Finally, he's in the hospital, and they patch him up. He's all right. His parents get word. They rush down to the hospital. Their 11-year-old son goes out bicycle riding, and now he's in the hospital without a leg. And they break down. They're crying. They're, woe is me. This is terrible. What are we going to do? It's terrible. Finally, he says, I said to them, you know, you have to get used to this. He said to his parents. He said, his parents take a look at him, and they say, we have to get used to this? you got to get used to it. He said, no, I don't. His parents said, what are you talking about? Well, you have to get used to it. He says, no, I don't. They said, you've gone crazy. You're the one who has to get used to it. He says, no, I don't. They said, what do you mean? He said, I'm used to it. You have to get used to it. He says, ever since then, he found his friends get all upset about somebody insulting them, not getting the car, not getting the mark they expected. And he just appreciates what life is about. He got a gift of happiness when he was 11 years old. Now, we have a sense of what he meant. But let's discuss how to be happy. And we'll get back to his story. So the first thing, how? How do we go about being happy? So the first thing that we want to say is first realize that there is a tremendous confusion over here. If you ask young people, which would you rather be, happy or rich? Come on, how many people would rather be happy? Don't tell me both. You know, we're offering strawberry ice cream or pistachio. Which do you want? Don't say both. Which one would rather be happy than rich? Come on, put up your hand. Yeah? All right, pretty, pretty large majority, right? Yeah? Okay. You ask somebody, which would you rather be happy or rich? Everybody wants to be happy. I mean, that's, that's living. Why do you got a lot of money and be miserable? <laughs> you know, a little less. At least be happy, enjoy it, right? Yeah? Okay. Are you happy? I don't know. Are you rich? Well, look, you know the definition of rich. I ain't rich, yeah? Even if I have 10,000, 20,000, my definition, I know exactly what I want. Rich is at least a million. Is a million rich? All right, you know, in a pinch, we can be rich with a million, yeah? But, <laughs> no, really. I want to be rich. Five million is where we start, right? Yeah. Well, you guys start two million. It's all right. But we have a clarity what we want to reach. Yeah. How about happy? I don't know how happy. I mean, you know, uh, there's a confusion. Some people are happier than you not. <laughs> I don't know. You know whether you're rich. You know darn well. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Here you are. You want to be happy. <laughs> there's a confusion. What's it about? So the second thing that you have to learn, you've got to realize, the second thing you've got to realize is that people will say they're happy. You look around, people will say they're happy, ask your father, ask your mother, ask your brother, ask your sister, you know that they're miserable. And they'll say, yeah, I'm happy. They'll say they're happy. They'll even smile to prove it. And you know that they're miserable. Do, do you see that? Somehow, they feel you should be happy, or it's right to be happy, so they say, I'm happy. And obviously, they can be blinking and twitching and nervous, and I'm happy, and they smile. So you say, what are you talking about? You, you look like you're a wreck. Yeah? They say, well, I haven't given up yet. <laughs> I figure something might turn up. You know, maybe the weekend, who knows, this summer. We might have an experience that's really heavy. We're still out there touring. I mean, you know, <laughs> We're still plugging, right? Do you see that? They don't know how. They can be miserable, and somehow they're waiting for Godot. Maybe something will turn up. If they haven't really given up, then they still want to think of themselves as being happy. All right, some people say, yeah, I'm miserable. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense. This isn't what it's about. Am I making, do you see that? All right, so number three is that realize that 
If you are depressed, you really want to know how to be happy, right? When you're suffering and you know you're suffering, you want to get out of it. And there are times we're depressed and we know we're suffering, right? But more, when you have children, you want to teach them how to be happy. If you have a son who's a hobo, at least let's make him a happy hobo, right? You see, so you want to know how to be happy. If you can give your parents happiness, it's your pleasure. Did you see that? So realize you want to learn how to be happy, you want to understand it. You want to really understand it. But more, realize, you see, that if you are mean, or if your children are mean to each other, if they're angry, if they're vicious, then what does that mean? They're miserable. They're miserable. Happy people are not mean. I'll focus your attention, you see, in Judaism we say, if you're an atheist, at least be a happy atheist, you're a better man. But you don't understand why a better man. You don't hurt people. You're kinder. So in order to focus your attention, I say to you, who would you rather have holding a gun at you? A happy hold-up man or a miserable guy? You understand? A happy guy. The happy guy, he takes your money. He says, don't worry. I will scout you out of this neighborhood. Don't come back here. Here's some money for coffee. Go home. Yeah. A happy old man? Sure. Right? He got your money. He feels a little happier, right? You're a good customer. He wants to take care of you. Yeah? The miserable guy, he takes your money, and then he shoots you. Isn't that right? He's miserable. He's mean. So if you see people, and if you ever catch yourself being vicious, hurting people, attacking people, <laughs> it means you're suffering. You're a better human being if you're happy. If your children are fighting, if you're fighting with your wife, if your wife is fighting with you, <laughs> man, take out the notes, <laughs> brush them up, and learn how to teach them how to be happy. Are, are we there? Is that, is that an obvious reality? Yeah. Happy people don't hurt no one. Hands open. If you're really happy, man, you want to share it. You know, you know, you don't want people to be miserable. Okay, so if you really enjoy it, you want more. You see, somebody who likes tennis, and I tell you, I'll, I got a nice tennis court, you know, real good, and I'll teach you how to play even better. Tell me, you know, there's a course in Harvard University, wine tasting. You ever hear that one? Does anybody know about wine tasting course in university? We have a club. Oh, uh, you got a club. You, where are you from? Penn. Penn. They have a wine tasting course. Yeah. Credit? No credit. Go to Harvard. <laughs> 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 but they have wine tasting course, right? Now, who will go into a wine tasting course? A guy who likes wine, who thinks it's delicious, or a guy who can't stand the stuff? That is a who needs to taste it, right? If you like it, you say, hey, maybe I can get more, right? Do you see that? All right, now who wants to learn how to be happy? A guy who's miserable or a guy who enjoys living? Learn how to be happier. So the point of number three is you've got to make a decision. I want to work at this. It's a decision. I want to get this for my children, for myself, for people who are attacking me. <laughs> I want to make people happy. I want to be happy. Makes sense. Number four is, once you make the decision, okay, realize that happiness has got no end. It's just like, if you're rich, if I give you $10,000, not bad, I'll take that, yeah? 100000 well, sure. If you have 100000 that's it? Or you want more? Go more. So happiness has levels. You don't think that if I'm happy, that's it. There's ecstasy, and the point of it all is to get to ecstasy, to be a billionaire. All right, then, look, $5 million, $10 million, you're rich, yeah? <laughs> billionaire, yeah. It's a little more, yeah? You want to be in ecstasy of life. This is the goal. Number five is, in order to do this, once we're motivated, we want that ecstasy, that that energy for living. I mean, we want it. For goodness sake, don't be afraid, yeah? If you got it, you'll have more power. You'll be relaxed. You'll be able to do more things. Are we with it? Yeah? Huh? 
Okay, so we got to get rid of some mistakes. We don't like to get rid of mistakes, but <laughs> we want our kids to get rid of mistakes. So the first mistake, number five, is that the first mistake you got to get rid of is... <laughs> I once told a fellow, I'll teach you how to be happy. And he takes a look at me and he says, oh, he says, God forbid. I said, what's the matter? He says, then what will I do the rest of my life? <laughs> you get it? Yeah. The first mistake you got to get rid of is to think that if you're happy, you're complacent. A lot of people are a little worried in the back of them. If I'm happy, then I won't have drive anymore. Do you see that? It's a little worry in the back of you. You know, I want to get somewhere. Happiness, then I'll fold up. <laughs> I won't have drive, right? So I want to focus your attention. You know who's really complacent? The happy guy or somebody who's thoroughly depressed. Depression is complacency. Did you ever have somebody depressed, a friend? You know he'd love to play tennis, and you got the court, and you say, come on, Fred, did you ever tell a guy, come on, let's play tennis, it'll, it'll cheer you up. He says, you're right. Do you want to be happy? Yeah. So come on now. Tomorrow, leave me alone. All right? If you're happy, and the guy says, hey, I got a court, fantastic. You don't say, no, nah, I'm happy enough. <laughs> that doesn't work. Happiness is energy. Happiness is power. Happiness is a tool. It's one of the 48 ways. You want your children to be happy. Even if they're a hobo, you want them to be a happy hobo, right? Not a miserable one. But at the same time, you're not going to say, well, he's a happy hobo. <laughs> what more can I want? <laughs> yeah? Because you know happiness is a step. It's a tool. That's what we're talking about. So don't be afraid of being happy and you'll lose your drive on the contrary. You're happy, now we can get to the business if you know what living is about. Yeah? If you're confused, so you're miserable, so you keep trying to do something, but if you're happy and you know what to do, then you've got more energy to do it. Makes sense. So number six is you've got to get rid of another mistake. There's another mistake. And what's the second mistake that people make in Western society? They think that happiness is a happening. It's a happening. Everybody in, comes from Western society says, man, if I had $10 million, I would be a happy man. Now, come on, think for a moment yourself. Think, if you had $10 million, your own money, wouldn't that be it? I mean, wouldn't you be happy the rest of your life? I don't, not second thoughts, yeah? But the first, huh? How many think that if I had 10 million bucks, that would be it, man. I'll be happy the rest of my life. I mean, ah, this is a smart, a smart group. Yeah. It might be your freedom to change happiness. I'd be happier. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happier, right? For two weeks, you see? Because people have this, if only I had, what else do you need to be happy? Okay, so five and ten million dollars not. But you also need a good wife. You need uh, to have uh, um, a good reputation. You need, uh, it's, it's like a, a menu. Well, you know, if I had all these things, then I would be happy. Is, is, that, is that the way you look at it? Check it out. What else do you need to be happy? Yeah, well, a few more things. What? Well, a compliment, a car, a, right? Yeah, right. A, 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 nice, a nice wife, beautiful home, and uh, recognition amongst my peers a uh, respectable position in the community, then I'll be happy. Essentially, it's still the Western concept of happiness is a happening. When I get it, I'll be happy. Now, you all remember the time when you thought, if only I had my driver's license, I'll be happy the rest of my life. When I was a kid, you could get, and I'm sure in Israel, you walk down the street and the youngsters in Israel would say, listen, if you had a car, would you have a miserable day in your whole life? We gave you a brand new car. Yeah. I remember as a kid, we used to think, if I had a car of my own, if a person has a car, he can be miserable? Impossible. You don't remember a time like that? If your parents would let you use the car any time you wanted, would you ever have a complaint? You don't remember such a time. You remember such a time, right? So today there are people, if only we had a pool so we wouldn't have to travel, you know, a pool in the backyard. Wives, particularly, and kids, give it to their parents. You know, if only we had a pool, yeah? 
So what happens? You get a pool. The first week, everybody's using it from 8 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. Yeah? The second week, one or two people are dipping in it. The third week, they forgot they have a pool. Is that right? They got used to it. Make sense? And that's a fact. Now, objectively, if we look at it, we know that people can have position, they can have respect, they can have a high political office, they can have money, they can have a beautiful wife and beautiful children, they can be good-looking and commit suicide. You know about such people? Yeah? You know about such people. They can be neurotics, they can be miserable, they can be mean and vicious, which means they're miserable. Is that right? <laughs> so it's not what you have. We all know that people can be happy without any of these things. The Dutch boy. So it's not a happening. It's not what you have. It's something else again. Remember, if your son is depressed, you're going to take him to a psychologist. There's something wrong. He's not a millionaire. He doesn't have to be a millionaire, but enjoy life. You want him to be happy. It's a, it's a question. Is this the right way or is that the right way? So you've got to use your perception. So then what is happiness about? If it's not this, then what is happiness about? So number seven is the Dutch boy. What did he tell us? He got a gift of happiness when he was 11 years old. What was that gift? What was he saying? He said when he was 11 years old, God Almighty gave him a gift of happiness. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a little, I mean, this kid, this kid is, is tough. What was he saying? Just think about it for a moment, right? He's saying, I looked at my leg, I saw it was cut off, I was depressed. And I said to myself, this is not going to help you. His parents come to the hospital and they say, terrible, our child, oh, it's awful. He says, you got to get used to it. They say, we, you, no, I'm used to it. What is he saying? That was his gift of happiness. You know what he was saying? You want to be happy, it's very easy, very easy. What you got to do is decide what you don't have. No use aggravating yourself, it won't do you any good. But finish, see it clearly, it never did you any good. You know it never did you any good. Then finish, you don't worry about it. Then you can enjoy what you have. Do you hear that? So we're saying the Dutch boy is telling us that God taught him, don't cry over spilt milk. Gone is gone. Finished. People don't appreciate you, so what? It's not going to do you any good worrying about it. Finish. Your parents are batting you on the head. <laughs> finish. Get used to it and forget it. Then, the doors are open to appreciate what you have. Make sense? All right, so number eight is the point of being happy, how to be happy. So the point of being happy is you've got to learn, appreciate what you have, the portion that you have, you're happy. Appreciate what you don't have, you're miserable. Appreciate what you don't have and give up on getting it, you're depressed. And then let that sink in. He who enjoys what he has is a happy man. He who enjoys what he doesn't have is miserable. He's thinking, oh, if only I had a car, if only I had a million, if only people appreciated me. That's misery. That's sure fire misery. My leg, my leg, is sure fire misery. That's it. You're miserable. You've given up on life. Appreciate what you have, you're happy. Give up on what you don't have and appreciate it. You're so let me give you an illustration that will bring it home. Let's say we were standing on the 70th floor of the Empire State Building. Imagine you're standing on the 70th floor of the Empire State Building. A fellow walks up to the window, he pulls up the window, and he's going to jump. You got it? How many of you guys will try to stop him? You try to stop him? Come on, put up your hands. Try to stop him? Everybody. I mean, after all, you don't want the guy. You went to fear. I mean, he's got a right to his own. Yeah, but he's not smart. Don't do it, right? You try to stop him. Okay, so he turns around. He's 10 feet tall. And he says, you try to stop me, I take you with me. You get this? He's 10 feet tall. He says, you try to stop me, <laughs> you come with me. 
What did we say? It's all right, fellow. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Probably it would need to interfere. <laughs> You're all right. Okay. So he opens the window. He's going to jump. He turns around. And he says, you know, I see that you're a sincere fellow. You really care. It's touched me. It's really touched me. So you explain to me why I shouldn't jump. But first, I want to tell you my troubles. And then he gives you a, a load of troubles. His girlfriend double-crossed him, his best friend. He ran away with his best friend who did him dirt in business. And his parents threw him out of the house. And he lost on the stock market. And then it went back. And he was wiped out on March. I mean, you know, wow, the horror story. I mean, look, all your troubles all packed into one guy's life. And he's only 27 years old. I mean, wow. You feel heavy, whoa, yeah. <laughs> all right, then he says, all right, now, I want to make an end to it all. Why not? It's a pretty tough, tough story, huh? Oh, oh boy, what are we going to do? This guy's miserable, and it seems that he's entitled, right? If anybody's entitled, this guy, you could swear, he's entitled to be miserable, yeah? So what are we going to do? He says, why not? You still know he should. He's making a mistake. Why? Isn't that interesting? You know he's making a mistake. So let me focus your attention. Try my way. You say to the guy, hey, listen, Buster, I hear you. Uh, you know, really, <laughs> I can understand you perfectly well. I'm almost ready to go with you, <laughs> just hearing your problem. You know, wow, it's really bad. But tell me one thing. If on top of all these troubles, the girlfriend who did your dirt and the friend who double-crossed you, and you know, all that troubles, on top of all that, all this time, you were blind also. You were also blind. You couldn't see. Would you be more miserable or less miserable? That guy thinks a moment. He says, you know, I'd be more miserable. Right? Is that right? Okay, so if you're more miserable, will you jump? Of course I'll jump. Right? Okay, so you're bending over. You're ready to go. A miracle. You can see. A miracle. You can see. All of a sudden, you can see. Would you jump just now? Or would you stick around two weeks to look around? You, you get the proposition? you never seen before. You never saw Aisha Torah, the Jerusalem fellow. Yeah, you never saw anything, right? You never saw anything. You never saw a guy smile. You never saw your parents. Even if they kicked you out, but you want to see him. Yeah. Would you stick around two weeks just to look around? How many guys think that he'll stick around two weeks? Sure, right? Yeah. Okay, so what about all this misery? Forget it for two weeks. <laughs> huh? Just to look around. Hey, tell me, you guys, did you ever really appreciate looking around? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're used to it already? <laughs> if you're used to looking around, you see, Everybody knows that if we didn't have eyes and we got a pair of eyes, we'd be happy for a month. And then we'd get used to it, right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Then you've got to appreciate. If you appreciate what you have, eyes, the worst troubles in the world are nothing. If you come out of Iran, you know, you were in Beirut airport, right? And they had you captives, hostages, and you got out. All the things you're worried about today, you'd say, man, alive, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm out of there. Whoa. For two weeks, you'd be thrilled with living, with freedom. Is that right? Yeah? And then you get used to it. Is that it? Yeah? So the point is, if you appreciate what we have, whether it's freedom, whether it's having eyes, feet, or, then all the troubles are nothing. The problem is that we get used to having eyes, being free. Then you've got to realize, if you don't lick that problem, if you don't appreciate having eyes, and you can get used to that, then you're going to get used to, you won't appreciate whatever you're going to get. Because then you'll have it. Does that make sense? Now you think a pool, you'll have it. You'll get used to that, right? Now you think, but if I get a degree, if I find the right girl, if I go to Europe, 